Hello there, I'm Scotty. You are not. Day 11 of December, we are talking about Tom and Huck, the 1995 reboot retelling of the adventures of Tom Sawyer, of which Huck Finn was a character in that book too. And I will tell you this, I grew up reading those books, you know, those kind of books that came out in the era, like, uh, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, Treasure Island, Kidnapped, Captain's Courageous. Those books, I read those. I had little ones. Wizard of Oz was one of them. But, uh, yeah, I grew up reading those. Uh, Robinson Crusoe is another one. So I love those kind of story. And I just started watching this. I'm like, I don't remember anything from Tom Sawyer. But as it started going, it started to hit me. I'm like the only thing I can the only thing I could remember actually is Tom Sawyer being stuck in a cave with Becky Thatcher. That's the only thing I can remember from the story. And would you know that's in this too. And I will say that for the most part, it is straightforward, the adventures of Tom Sawyer. Like just straight verbatim those stories. And so you have the oh he catches uh no, a murder. Okay, before I get into this, uh, there's a character in this movie called Injun Joe. I realize that it's politically incorrect to call him that, so from now on, I'm just going to call him Joe. And any other fur, any further occurrence of me saying the, that name in its full entirety is a slip up. I'm not meaning to, it just happens, and I will probably correct myself. But, Tom Sawyer sees Joe murder the local doctor. And so there's the whole thing where they think that the town, local town drunk did it. And so but they make a pact, which I've never gotten. They make the pact not to tell because they do, they rot and die. I just don't know. And then even Huck holds him to it and it's like, okay, this is padding. Because if he told him right away that Joe was the one who killed the doc, that ball would be done. So it's basically padding. And yes, in a storybook, you want to have a little bit of padding. I don't remember if that's exactly what happened in the book verbatim, but it is pretty close. And so there, you know, I make the deal not to tell anyone. But the local drunk, he gets, you know, basically framed for it. Even Joe himself comes out and says, I saw him stab the doc four times. You know. No, this is related. It was only three times. And I don't get Becky Thatcher in this. Like, she clearly has a thing for Tom Sawyer. And, like, these are kids that don't understand. Like, he gives her, like, a doorknob or whatever it is as an engagement ring. And then he's tells her that he was engaged to someone else two months ago and she gets all mad and it's like they don't understand relationships and like Becky Thatcher is obviously Tom Sawyer's love interest if you watch the book and then here she's she's almost like intolerant of him whenever she sees him she's like mm. one, one point she like slaps him across the face and punches him or whatever and then they play this game the girls play a game where they look in a mirror and whoever you see is you're going to get married to. And this so happens, Tom's right behind you. He goes, now we have to get married and that thing. And then he saves her life, as you know, from the story, you know. But, yeah. <clears throat> so you have that, but you also have Joe, and we'll set it, working with this other guy who is... So there are actors in this that I've seen before. You know, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Home Improvement, and... Many other things back in the 90s. You have Brad Renfro, Renfro, who I know has been in stuff, but I don't know specifically what. And then you have uh, Rachel Lee Cook, who is in uh, She's All That and those uh, This Is Your Brain on Drugs commercials, and she was in Psych for a few episodes. Yeah, so she's been in stuff, and she's Becky Thatcher in this. And you have the Widow Douglas is actually played by the old lady from Home Alone 3. I was just like, is that the, the town drunk? It's Muff. 
something like that, uh, is Michael McShane, who I know from the the Lawrence Brothers TV show Brotherly Love, who's also in the Ter Tower of Terror, which is another Disney movie, which I will review next October, because it was Halloween one. Same thing with the Haunted Mansion. They're not going to be in this this year's. They'll be in Halloween at some point. Uh, and Charles Rocket is uh, Judge Thatcher, Becky's father. And then you have Cortland Mead, who is uh-huh in uh, The Little Rascals. He was also in Hellraiser 4. He was Jack Merchant, the kid in Hellraiser 4. And uh, is that pretty much it? Joe, I don't remember saying. I think it, they said he was in the uh, Last of the Mohicans, I guess. But I don't remember. Oh, and his partner, not the doc, but this other guy, is the sheriff, Sheriff Cravens, from Book of Shadows by Witch 2. Jeffrey, how much you invented that blood and that van matched the damn tourists? That guy. You know what I mean? It's him. Like, that's that's the sheriff guy from Book Witch, Book Witch Blair Witch 2. Which I shall still say is underrated, and I prefer it to the original. At least, stuff happens. As weird as that movie is, stuff happens. What happens in Blair Witch, the first one? They lose the map, being kicked in, shit into the creek, and then the house stuff. That's it. But, yeah, it is just basically the story of Tom Sawyer. And, like, pretty much what you're going to think happens. If you've read the book, you know what's going to happen. But, like, eventually, Tom Sawyer does the right thing. In my opinion, he does the right thing. And he goes to the courthouse and he stops them from, you know, hanging the town drunk and convicting him of the murder. And he points out that it was, it was, uh... It was Joe that did it. And then you're thinking, well, they're not going to believe a kid, especially Tom Sawyer, who's basically a liar. If you read the books, you know that he's basically a lying kid. But he says that there were three stabbings, not four, which only the mortician knew about. So, yeah. Yeah, he's right. I didn't tell nobody, but he's right. And then Injun Joe goes on the run. He kills his partner, Sheriff Cravens, from Book of Shadows. And then... He's going after the the gold. And if there's anything that I want to critique, really, is that Tom Sawyer just happens to find the gold because he and Becky and a bunch of other kids in the class are going to the caves with town drunk guy, Muff, I think his name is, with uh, Michael McShane. It's Ian McShane. Michael McShane. Michael McShane's character. And then, like, I don't know if it's from the story, but in this version, they make Becky a little bitch, basically. Because she this, this, it has so much disdain for Tom Sawyer. And so she, he, they're both yelling, hello, hello, hello. And the caves start to shake and rumble. He tells her, hey, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. He goes, don't tell me what to do. And she keeps doing it and then realizes, uh-oh, I messed up. So now they're stuck in the cave. And what I do like is there's a scene with the judge and he's like, my daughter Becky and Tom Sawyer, they're, in, they're lost in the cave and we gotta go find them. And Muff comes up and goes, I wanna help you, judge. He's like, All right. It's like, Dave, they, they got the trust in him now. And then Huck comes to save the day. And I don't talk much about him. He's basically, this is, as it's Tom and Huck, he's in it a little bit more than the original story. Like in the beginning, Tom almost drowns. He's saved by Huck Finn. And then they have a scene the next day where they're talking and hanging out and stuff. But it's basically the Tom Sawyer movie with Huck Finn a minute, a little bit more than usual. He pops in and out. And he does help save Tom and Becky having a knife fight with Joe, but really he's not able to stop him until Tom is like, hey, I'm going to dump this. He's like, no. And Joe ends up falling down the hole. It's like an itch. An itch. 
skin <clears throat> and dies basically and again these early disney movies this was a 90 disney movie i talk about killing we talk about they talk about using dead cats to cure warts i'm not entirely sure how that would work but it was very pet cemetery to me because they're going to go to the graveyard with it and it's how they see the murder was like this pet cemetery starring john taylor thomas is that what this is i guess but yeah and jonathan taylor thomas's hair i know he was like the mop top kid of the 90s but what was going on with his hair in this movie I, I think it was a wig. Sometimes it'd be a little longer. Sometimes it'd be shorter. In one scene, it's real short. Like, it's not this short, but it's like a medium short cut. I don't know. Maybe it was a stunt kit. I don't know. But, yeah, this movie was good. But it's not one I'm going back to. It's one I've always wanted to see. And I'm disappointed because the trailers back in the 90s made this seem like a different movie. I thought... This was a modern retelling of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn in modern days. The commercials, the trailers for these were all 90s up. Like, hey, check it out. You know, even the case itself says. Uh, no, that's not what it is. A lot of kids get in trouble these to invent it. What is the. I don't remember, there was a quote where it was like, I don't remember, but it's not on there, but it, the, I remember the trailers making it seem as if it was a, a, a more 90s, uh, modern at the time version of Tom Sawyer. It's not, it's just a retelling, it's in the same setting as usual, and... It's something I've seen before. I watched the Wishbone episode. I've seen the Rankin Bass cartoon. I've read the book. So it's stuff I've seen before. I've even seen the Huckleberry Finn movie. The Adventures of Huck Finn with Elijah Wood. I've seen that. I mean, that being pretty good. I might have to try to get that for next year. And yes, there's also a character with a name. I just have to call him Jim. Because I can't call him the other name. Because it's politically incorrect. And a slur in this case. I'm not sure about this one, but yeah. So both stories have characters that you can't really call them by their names. So you gotta call them Joe and Jim. <laughs> That's it. I'm just saying. But I read both books. And the books. <laughs> huh. I'm just saying. So it's gonna get a middle of the road for me because. I don't know, it's not thing I'll be rushing, rushing back to, but I'm glad I watched it because it's something I wanted to watch for a long time. I know it's on Disney Plus, never, you know, had the chance. But would I show it to my son? Maybe, maybe, if I wanted to see the, the story of Tom Sawyer. Maybe he knows about it. Right? I'll talk, hey, hey, wait, you ever heard the story of Tom Sawyer? Maybe I'll show him that. I don't think I'll show him Huck Finn if it's on there. I'll, he doesn't need to hear that word. But... You know, it's easier to tell him, hey, don't say the engine word. Just call them Native Americans. That's all I'll say of that word. But I'm not sure it's as bad as the other word. You know what word I'm talking about. If you read the book, you know what word I'm talking about. Or if you've seen the Elijah Wood movie, you know what word I'm talking about. I don't think that's as bad, but you still shouldn't say it. So, yeah. Tom and Huck. Not a bad movie. It sits in the middle of the road sure and so but next next we are going to go back to the land of animated films one of my favorite disney animated films of all time uh prepare to enter sherwood forest guys where we take care of that no good rotten dirty king of england till then thanks for watching I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.